So I was um, just watching the Art Alive intro screen while I was getting ready for the show. And I was kind of curious if they actually did make that in Art Alive because it looks super crisp and clean. Um, obviously, they used a much finer line than all the fat ones that I've used. But yes, we are back with a, another <sighs> special form of torture. <laughs> this is my project that no one's asked for, where I develop a whole bunch of artwork using nothing but a Sega Mega Drive and Sega's Art Alive. Um, I've done a couple of these now, and I'd like to say that it's getting easier and easier to pull things together in Sega's Art Alive, but that would be a lie. Every time I boot up this program, I'm faced with some fresh new challenges, which keeps me on my toes. Actually, I was using this control pad for the last couple of uh, ones that I did, and I don't love it. It's starting to wear out a little bit. So just hang tight while I replace the control pad. I'd like to say it's like, you know, getting a new brush, but yeah, the control pads are never a great option to do artwork with. Um, that's all fun, part of the fun here on these very torturous episodes where I slowly pull together a piece of art using nothing but Sega's art alive. So today's drawing is one where I want a couple of greens and blues. One of the very first illustrations I did in this program was the angry fly guy. And it was like a fly giving uh, the bird, I guess, um, which I loved. But I didn't quite nail the composition and it wasn't really the kind of fly that I wanted to draw. And I've been drawing a lot of flies recently, so if you've checked out the website, the leftoverculturereview.com, link down below in the description to check out the virtual exhibition. All these pieces of art will be used in a virtual exhibition. Um, so if you've checked out the website, you may have noticed that I've been drawing a few flies. Um, unless I've changed the website already. But... Yes, I have been drawing a few flies and I kind of wanted to really nail one for this project. When I say nail one, I mean like get the composition right and do it in a manner that... Uh... Man, rough start. Do I say that every episode? Rough start. Um, I definitely have trouble doing the drawing as well as the talking. So after I explain what I'm actually doing and why usually I will pause the video and just let you guys enjoy the time lapse. What I was saying was, um, what was I saying? Flies. I've been drawing a lot of flies. The one that I drew like at the very start, even though I really loved how it came out, it wasn't the sort of fly that I wanted to draw. And even now, trying to get the composition right in this um, drawing application has been nothing but a challenge. So let's try and make those eyes a bit smaller. I've been drawing a lot of flies. I really love the idea of, you know, flies following around dirt, depravity, trash. Um, they just like thrive in it, right? So My little fly guys, they just feel like they would be at home in the games room where everything here is like dead and dying. It's old tech. It's forgotten about. It's, I wouldn't call it trash, but um, yeah, I just love the, the whole vibe of the fly. And in saying that, like Baxter Stockman from the original Ninja Turtles was an absolute favorite character of mine, pretty much for the same reason. He was just like, obviously a mad inventor, but he was a really cool fly character. That may have been a bit of inspiration for what we have got going on here. Even this fly is looking a little bit too big. So I'm not going to be able to get the whole body. Oh. 
All right, tiny fly. Let's actually get this done right. And you might be saying, hey, bruiser, it'd be easier if you just use the shape tool, but I don't like how perfect and straight the shape tool lines are. I really, I use this tool here because it is a bit wonky. Um, and I think when even these eyes seem too big. Hmm. How do you do smaller eyes without using the shape tool? Um, little, little taps. Oh, went too far that way. All right. I think there's a bird on the roof. And my dog's not liking it. Hey, Winnie, what's that? What's that on the roof? It's, it's a tin roof. <laughs> Man, the conditions artists have to work in, am I right? All right, I'm liking this shape a little bit more for the size of our fly guy here. Um, yeah, so flies are something that I have drawn a lot of recently and I really just wanted to get a good looking leftover culture review style fly for this project here because I think it's yeah, it, it's important for me. And that's why we do anything that we do. Because we see the value and importance of a truly well-mastered fly in Sega's Art Alive. <sighs> Lots of very fine lines. One thing that I do want to try and do is nail the um like get all the lines together and make sure that when i do start coloring this guy in i don't need to go back and fill a lot of lines and try and fix a lot of stuff up because that's always a pain in the butt um is that what i wanted to do oh oopsie i definitely did not want to do that what I'm going to do is my old background trick where I isolate the line that I want to get rid of and then use the paint bucket tool to color it the same as the background. Bundabar. So I chose this palette here because it's got lots of, um, of those great greens and blues, which I think should give our fly guy a bit of cool color. Um, also talking about flies, the mighty Max figure um, with the fly. Uh, I just love the colors that they chose to do that particular play set in. The review's up over on the Leftovers channel. I can leave a link to that as well. All right, guys, and we are back. I just gave the birds a bit of a fright. Um, so hopefully we get a little bit of peace and quiet here for our recording. Um, yeah, I think our fly guy is coming together pretty well. Uh, obviously, we are still talking about Sega's art alive. It can only really be as good as it can be. Um, I'm not expecting any miracles, but I do... Obviously, I keep doing this project because I do like the end results. Um, it's obviously a, a limited program, but I think because of its limitations, it just gives us a really unique picture that you wouldn't really be able to... Like, obviously, you could, like, replicate it in other programs, but the fact that it looks the way it does is really a case of you know, the tool that we're using. So yeah, that, that's kind of like a, 
like one reason why I keep coming back to using something like say Gazada Live, even though it frustrates me and it's so much harder to use than a lot of other options out there. Um, I think I made the joke before that like a pen and paper would be miles easier to use, um, which it is definitely very true. So what I'm drawing here is the top of a drink can. Um, I did do that can artwork as well using Sega's Art Alive. And I just, yeah, there's something about rubbish and trash. Um, if you remember, if you did end up getting to watch that episode, uh, the can itself was called Beheaded because it lost the cap, the pull ring on top, which yeah, I just really like the idea of this piece of rubbish, something that gets thrown away, like having... Having been destroyed and losing a sense of itself. Um, and that obviously being a big deal for the can, but for nobody else. Um, so... Yeah, it was a fun... Definitely a, like a, a fun idea for me to play around with. And I thought what better way than to reintroduce a can for this picture here with our angry fly guy, because they always seem to like soda. Uh -huh. So we've got a straw, we've got our can, the composition is starting to come together. Obviously it's not, um, ah oh dear. Obviously, it's not as perfect as I would like, but nothing in this application is perfect. So we are just rolling with it. Um, I do say um a lot. I'm a bit of an ummer. It's weird, like, I, every time I sort of finish a sentence and I want to finish it with an um, I'm not really sure why. Might be because I'm waiting for the other person to say something. Or I'm not entirely sure about what I'm saying. I definitely struggle when I am working on something like this to talk and to keep a clear train of thought because, yeah, I get sucked into the drawing so much. And that's always been, um, not a problem, but it's always been how I work is that yeah, I'll get really sucked in to what I'm doing, especially drawing. Um, calms the mind, stops everything racing. And, you know, it's not a bad thing, but trying to record yourself doing it, which is why I'm going to sign off and I'm going to keep moving ahead with the fly and you get to just enjoy the time lapse instead of listening to me um, carry on. Hey guys, I just wanted to bring you back into the loop quickly because it's about time that we start coloring our little fly dude. Um, obviously when I started his nose, I made a comment about keeping the lines tight so they would be easier to color. And I have completely um, ruined that whole premise with all my loose line work. But I also, I, th I think it's gonna be better for it. What I wanted to do was create sections of blue, I guess. Um, if I had more of like a bluey green, that'd be great. But if I draw inside touching these black lines, I should be able to paint bucket 
and create that shape that I really want. I don't usually film during the day, so if there's a lot of noise like birds, dogs barking and trains passing and sirens and beeps, um, yeah, that's why I usually film at night. But I had a bit of time during the day and I really wanted to do this guy the other night, but I didn't. I focused on a few other pictures instead. But here we have him starting to come together and I'm really excited about that. And I'm going to be using two colors for the fly. So this lighter blue I'll be using um, for the most part. And then I'll go back over with the darker blue and just create some, some shade, uh, some dimension, a bit of texture. Um, and then it might be cool to leave some of the pink in as well, bleeding through from the background. Um, one thing that I haven't really explored a whole lot of in Art Alive is creating more of a, um, like obviously the cleaner images are a bit easier to do because you draw a line, you fill it in, um, done. But when it comes to rougher sort of pictures, yeah, I think there's stylistically, aesthetically, they look really cool. Um, and I've been, loving some of the digital brushes I've had available uh, in my other drawing applications. But there's certainly a challenge in Art Alive to try and replicate that style of drawing. So what I might do is... I'm going to have to go over a lot of my black lines already. Um, it's all part of the process. It's like you draw on something, then you have to draw back over it, and then you draw... You just keep on drawing. And sometimes the end result surprises you of um, how good it can look. Unless you really hate Sega Art Alive Art. Um, if this whole process has been absolutely frustrating and terrible for you, I am really sorry. I'm surprised you're still watching this far, but I've said it before, but I think the end product of having a gallery of artwork designed in Sega's Art Alive will just be a really cool end point. And obviously at the point that I'm recording this, I haven't actually released um, any of this artwork yet. I wanted to do like a collection. I didn't want to just like release one or two pieces at a time. I wanted to be like, bang! There's a whole bunch of artwork done in Sega's Art Alive. Thank you so much for, um, you know, for supporting the channel and supporting what I'm doing here. And if you want to see more, then let me know. And yeah, I, I don't want to do like 50 pieces and then realize that it was an absolute stupid idea. Um... But no, like I said, I'm, I'm really optimistic that together, as a collection, they will all look really cool next to each other. So what I am liking is that... Yeah, we have some... Uh, the pink bits bleeding through from the background. We have some black that we're going to need to redraw. Um, actually, I might even go ahead and erase this big bit of hair here. Oh, maybe I'll use the darker one. So I can draw some hair on using the darker blue and we can start playing with how those two colors sort of complement each other. And then if I don't like it, I can go back to the black with the paint bucket. Or maybe I could do a combination of both, a few black um, hairs, a few um, blue hairs. 
That might be kind of cool too. I don't know if you can hear that, but the school bell's gone off too. It's morning tea time. So instead of doing all those V's and W's, I might also put in a couple of lines, just make them look a bit hairy. And we should apply that same principle to our fly's head. So in terms of composition, I'm really enjoying, I guess it's, I, I mean, I wish I had more space for the wings, um, but I'm liking where it's coming or where it's going. I'm liking where it's going. I'll go back to the pink for a bit and let's see if we can. cut some of those lines back in that we lost. All right, I'm digging that. Now I'm going to put the wings in place. Oh dear. So much for amazing line work. Now I'm going to put the wings in place. Now I'm going to put the wings in place. I reckon there's still a gap there first. Now I'm going to put the wings in place for the final time. It worked, it worked. Um, then what we can do is take a bit of that background color because they're not wings being like bright white like that. They need to have just like a little bit of veins, something happening with them. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, now that the fly is starting to get colored, I'm going to pause the video again, keep on going on, keep on tracking with this fly, um, and then come back to reveal the final miniature fly dude. All right, see you soon. Thank you.
Alright guys, and for the grand reveal, we have our fly. I uh, don't really have a name for it yet. Um, I can't call it fly guy again, or um, opportunistic fly, tiny fly dude, just fly, the fly. Um, obviously he's getting stuck into that can of soda. Like I mentioned, I've done a couple of cans now. They seem to come up a little bit as well. I think I just really like the shape. Because we've got like this messy sort of fly. I tried to give it a few jagged edges and different colors in it. Um, I also created some segments. So his like butt end and his head end are separate from his like body. Just to try and make it feel a little bit more like messy and organic. Instead of like all these really clean lines. Um, which yeah, I really like the way the final composition came out and talking about cans I actually did a painting of the beheaded can um, Before I did the art alive episode. I do like the art alive version better especially because like I screwed up the actual shape of a can <laughs> But I did notice that I added a little fly to this picture as well. So um the flies just keep showing up which is yeah, like I said, it's all about trash and they surround themselves, well, they surround themselves with the dead and dying. So it was just, yeah, I, I kind of like the idea of flies. So there you have it. We have our fly. I also did add in some like background lines coming out of the can, um, especially with this kind of artwork where it is quite simple block colors i like just showing where there's a bit of action a bit of motion and that looks like it can look a few different ways i've added like these little uh lines i guess shake marks but also like things colors and things bursting out it's just like it's a fun way to be expressive without necessarily having to get bogged down with how to draw that expression, um, especially when you're dealing with, again, something like Sega's Art Alive. I say that a lot. You really only have a few limited tools. The composition is really hard to nail. As you remember from the start of this episode, I did draw like three different flies before I settled on that one. And even this one, I wish I had a bit more space for the wings. But I think all in all, Really happy with how this one turned out. Really do appreciate you guys hanging out with me for like the whole time it took to put this together. Um, I think this piece was about an hour and a half. Um, so that's that's a pretty massive stint for a Sega Art Alive picture, especially because once I turn this system off, that picture is gone. So obviously it's been recorded and it's available over on the leftoverculturereview.com link down below as part of the virtual exhibition. But um, yeah, it is, I always struggle with that balance between like how much is too much to put into an image where at the end of it all, you hit the power button and it's gone. Um, so thank you for tuning in. Stay tuned for more leftover culture. And definitely if you are digging how these pieces are coming together, you know where to find them. Cheers guys.